Hey good people, it is Tashira from Politics and Fashion here today with a video that includes my five steps for creating a capsule wardrobe. Now, you all may know if you are not new around these parts that I love a capsule wardrobe. I create this type of content multiple times a year, typically with the new season or as a new season approaches. If you are watching this video at the time that I am filming it, then you know that spring is right around the corner, thank God, okay? And so I'm thinking a lot about what I may want to include in this upcoming season's capsule. And I thought it was a perfect time to share with you all the five step process that I go through each season. So if you wanna know more about a capsule wardrobe, you've heard about it, don't know much about it, or you need some capsule wardrobe inspiration, you have made it to the right place, my friends. Before I get started though, make sure you are subscribed to my channel, give the video a big thumbs up if you love it. And let's get started with today's video. Before I get started, let me say that everything that I talk about today is really rooted in my newest ebook, How to Declutter Your Wardrobe and Curate a Style That You Love. In that ebook, which is almost like a workbook, I go through the process of decluttering. Also, I talk about different style pillars that exist. That is how you define your personal style and the strengths and challenges of each. Also, those different holes that you might have depending on your style pillar. So you're definitely gonna wanna go and pick that up if you are yearning for more knowledge after today's video. Let's get started with the five tips though. The first tip is to declutter, declutter, declutter. I know I probably sound like a broken record on this topic because I had shared it with you all before. However, it is something that I think just has to ground any type of capsule wardrobe because how can you decide what those 15, 20, 10 pieces are going to be if your closet is full of things that you no longer wear that you need to donate or sell, for example. And so for me, what that looks like is a full Marie Kondo declutter, y'all. I'm talking about pulling everything out that you own if you have not already done so. At this point, my wardrobe is so curated that I don't need to pull every single piece out. However, if you have never done a big purge, now is the time to do so, especially if you were trying to narrow down or to truncate your wardrobe into interchangeable pieces, okay? So what that means is everything's out your closet. Everything's out from underneath your children's bed, out of the garage, from down at your mama house, okay? Because I know y'all be storing clothes and shoes and handbags everywhere. Blow the dust off of it. <laughs> and get it to a central location where you can see everything in front of you. And I did this with you all in a video last year that I will link down below. You all really enjoyed that process of decluttering with me. So hopefully that can give you a little bit of inspiration as well. But the reason this is so important y'all is also because there are likely things that are in your closet that need to just go on to glory. They need to be tossed because they have holes in them, they're no longer in good condition. They need to be donated to a charity because someone else could use the item. Or, and this is my favorite category, that need to be sold. So as you are decluttering, you are putting things into those three categories, okay? Let's focus here on what to do if you need to sell the pieces. If the pieces are in good condition, if they are luxury items, for example, let's say they no longer fit either your body type, your weight has fluctuated, or it's just no longer your style, or it's something that you purchased that you didn't really love and you never really wore, you all know during Vlogmas, I ended up getting rid of a lot of luxury pieces out of my closet or mid-range to luxury. I sold some on Poshmark and I have since sold some to Fashion File. Here are the places that I love to go. Poshmark, as I have mentioned, is a great online portal to buy and to sell, but specifically to sell because what it allows for you to do is keep a bigger percentage of the items that you sell. And you can also use it for site credit if you would like. Poshmark also does not have a singular focus on luxury items. So it can be literally anything in good enough condition to sell. You can put it up on a Poshmark page. The other place I like to sell is Fashion File. And that is because out of all of the luxury online sites that you can consign at, essentially, Fashion File buys your items from you. So you don't have to wait until someone else purchases it 
purchases them in order for you to get your payout. Now, Fashion File does focus on those luxury items or those mid-range price points, so do keep that in mind. And that brings me to my third favorite place to sell items online, and that is The Real Real. Now, The Real Real is going to require for your items to sell before you receive your payout. However, I find that their concierge service is really, really nice. And by that, what I mean is that there is oftentimes a real, real representative in your area, especially if you live either within or adjacent to a major city, and they will literally come to your home, evaluate your items, and take them with them and put them on the site. So it makes it so easy. It's like white glove door service. Once you have decluttered and you have decided what to keep and what to get rid of, when you're looking at the pieces that you're keeping, I want you to think about what is my current lifestyle? Uh, I've shared with you all in the video before that sometimes we are hoarding pieces based upon a fantasy lifestyle, right? You wear a uniform five days a week, but you got 50 pairs of red bottoms in your closet. You're a physician and you're not wearing stilettos, pumps, in the club, right? But you have all of these <laughs> glamorous life accoutrements, okay? And so think about what is missing that you have decluttered that you actually need for your current lifestyle, okay? For example, when I was an attorney working in public policy, I had much more traditional workwear in my wardrobe. I have decluttered a lot of those pieces. I am not going to now go and replace those items because they don't fit my current lifestyle, okay? And I think this is true for a lot of us, especially being that we have come on the other side of a pandemic where we were sheltering in place, many of us were working from home. A lot of us have not gone back into an office, at least not full time. And so what that means is a lot of work wear you may no longer need to put into your wardrobe, especially if you think you're going to be working from home or for yourself for the long run, okay? And also, Think about what your style currently is. Not what it was 15 years ago. Not what it was before you had children. But what it is today. How often are you traveling? For example, for me, because I work for myself, it gives me a lot more leeway to do what I love, which is to travel. Uh, I have, that I know of, at least three vacations that are planned. I'm going to Morocco. I'm going to Punta Cana. And I'm also going to Greece this fall. So whenever I am introducing pieces into my wardrobe, I'm thinking about what are things that are going to be really good to travel with? What are things that are going to be great to go on vacation with? Because they are going to get a lot of wear given the fact that I'm going to be in a more tropical destination and climate for long-term vacations. One vacation, for example, to Greece is almost two weeks, okay? So what that means is I want to think about dresses, things that are light, that are airy, that are flowy. That would not have been a focus for me if I was not now a solopreneur who creates content, who creates travel content at that. Do y'all see where I'm headed here? Another key component when you think about what you were missing is going to be to think about your style pillar. Again, I go through the series of style pillars in my newest ebook. My style pillar is elevated simplicity. So what that means for me is that I love me a good old basic. I actually have on one of my favorites, which is an Aritzia bodysuit today. I have on a pair of faux leather pants on the bottom, but I love basics with a twist. So this kimono, for example, is that twist that I'm bringing to the outfit. I love to have things that are interchangeable. I love neutral colors. For my capsule, I probably am not going to go out and buy 10 items that are all full of color that are all patterned because what I know is that I'm not going to get a lot of wear out of those things even if they are missing in my wardrobe. I highly recommend you actually make a list of what you were missing so that it's not just kind of in your head and you're trying to keep track of it. But give yourself the privilege of being able to see these things in black and white, whether you type them or you write them down, you put them in your journal, etc. It's almost like you're creating a map for yourself for the season as you curate your capsule wardrobe. 
Now, one of the most fun parts for me is number three, and that is to figure out your inspiration for your capsule wardrobe for this season. I use Pinterest for this. I have had a capsule wardrobe board for the past probably five or six years. I'm going to put my current one here. I tend to put spring and summer together because the pieces, for the most part, are going to be interchangeable. Obviously, what I wear for summer, I can also wear in spring just with an additional layer. And what I'm being drawn to right now are actually actually pops of color here and there. One color in particular that I, for some reason, just has been living rent free in my head um, is this kind of kiwi uh, um, chartreuse color. I love it. I think it looks great with tan. It looks great with black. It looks great with pattern pieces. All of the things that I already have in my wardrobe, this is going to really be a standout piece for. And so even as someone who, as I mentioned, loves neutrals, having that pop and thinking intentionally about it is really important for me. Aside from that pop of color, I am also, if you really think about the themes here on my inspiration board, really digging suiting, relaxed trousers, and relaxed denim, specifically cargos. Okay, and so having this inspiration board has forced me to slow down a little bit and think about, okay, how do I want to present? What do I already have? Again, what are we keeping? And if I was to add something new, what is kind of the outfit formula that I would want to create? That's what having an inspiration board really does. It's almost like a mood board for your capsule. It doesn't mean you need to replicate each and every item. It just means that it gives you a chance to think about how can you put things together based upon this inspiration. If you don't want to do Pinterest, obviously OG, Triple OG magazines will do. Saving images from Google will do. Having maybe the home screen on your phone or your computer will do. Just have a place where you're able to curate all of the ideas that are coming to mind for you for the season. Now, we have not gotten to shopping yet because... That is the last thing I'll tell you now that is going to be on the list because you actually don't have to shop for a capsule every single season. But what you do have to do if you want to shop first is to create a budget. Create a budget, create a budget. Now, I just mentioned to you that I have three major trips coming up. I also will likely be back and forth from LA to film for Access Hollywood. I've been a style expert on Access Hollywood multiple times. I go back and forth to Boston and I go home quite a bit and will probably sneak in a trip to Miami here or there. A home for me is Florida. Uh, short vacations that are within maybe two, three hours of the DMV will happen likely as well. With that said, girl, all of that travel is going to be a hefty sum of disposable income for me for the year. Knowing that now, knowing that now means that I have to keep that in mind because I would rather spend my money on experiences than things as I'm thinking about what my budget is for the season. I would also like to invest in at least one handbag this year and one jewelry piece this year. So I'm thinking long term beyond the current capsule. With that in mind, I don't know if I personally have much of a budget for spring, summer. I also do rent the runway, which I've shared with you all before. So I almost feel like I'm still getting new pieces in. However, if I add up the things that let's say I just decide to just blow a bag that I know I absolutely, absolutely want that I've been tracking for some time. My budget will probably be around $2,500. And again, that is for spring and for summer. You can figure out what budget works best for you. If you are more of that blank slate style pillar and you find that once you declutter and you go through this process, you really don't have much at all, I definitely say having a budget is so important because it's gonna keep you focused on the items that are really going to be the most interchangeable and give you the biggest bang for your buck. What I like to do is have a handwritten list and as I see new things, as I am influenced, as I am inspired, I add something, I take something off. Think about it overnight and I may add something again. It is truly like this rotating list that goes round and round and round until I figure out, okay, here are the pieces that I for sure know I want to buy. If I'm thinking about what is missing in my wardrobe right now, the biggest thing that stands out is denim. 
And I say that because over the past probably six to eight months or so, I have gotten a little thick in the hips, okay? Now, we, we're grateful because the curves are curving. However, my waist has not changed. So what happens is I am trying to wear my old denim and I can't get them up over my butt. Or when I find denim that I love, um, they are way, way too big in the waist, so big that I can't even get them altered. Or, again, I can't get them up over my hips, but I know they would fit my waist. And so, I am likely going to be on the hunt for denim and give myself a budget for that. And other than that, I did a wardrobe basics refresh with you all. So, I think that I am definitely good there. I tend to look at stunt pieces this time of year as well because I will be traveling so much. But also because I think I have the basics covered. And so, when I am thinking about what do I want to introduce, in my wardrobe I'm really intentional about standout pieces that are going to be long lasting and we'll get to my list in just a moment and that leads me to the last tip which is to create your own shopping list with your budget in mind now it is so important y'all that you think um, beyond maybe the traditional places where you might go to shop I say that because this is a time where Secondhand stores are going to be your biggest friend, especially if you were not accustomed to shopping at a particular price point. You do not have to buy luxury or designer items brand new, high quality items brand new. However, I do encourage that you pay attention to natural fabrics or naturally derived fabrics because your capsule wardrobe is gonna be the pieces that get the most mileage this time of year, right? It's not that sequins gown that you're gonna wear to that gala one time. It is having a great pair uh, of black trousers, having a great blazer, having a great cardigan, certain knitwear that you might want, okay? So think about how can I go up a price point to get better quality, even if that means buying less. And so from that example, places that I've already mentioned like Fashion File, Poshmark, and also the real real may be your best friend and if you are shopping for new items then i would think about places that i've mentioned before those affordable brands that have good quality pieces like cost like aritzia and also h m has great great pieces especially under their conscious collection and their studio collection has some very style forward pieces and so you can find high quality pieces that don't have to break the bank if you think about going in those directions but as a preview to the next video let me just share with you if I do end up purchasing things what is going to be on my list I am thinking about denim which I have already mentioned I would do some strange for these right here I girl I called down the assets to the local strip club I say do you need somebody for amateur night give me just one weekend because at, at the price point, I just can't, I can't bring myself to pull the trigger, okay? The Attico, I think, is one of the most style forward and overpriced brands that currently exist here on the planet Earth. And, and, and hey, when your pieces are in high demand, who can blame you, okay? It's capitalism. <laughs> and the girls can spend their money how they choose. But what I know is I cannot see myself blowing a bag on these. And so what I've been looking at are particular dupes. I have found two. One of them is by a brand called Hudson. Let me know down below. Have y'all ever heard of Hudson jeans? I have not. Uh, because they still come in at $500, which is a lot for a pair of jeans, okay? And then I found these from a black-owned brand, which are more likely to be the ones that I may pull the trigger on. Number two, because we are talking about spring, something I have been lusting after for quite some time, but would be a huge chunk of my budget, is this Low Wave sweater. The Low Wave sweater, the anagram logo has come out in multiple colors. The one that I have loved the most is one, the chartreuse one. And it is on my Pinterest inspiration board, but it is long gone. I've not been able to find it on the secondhand market. And so what is the most accessible currently is the tan one. And I have been stalking this thing like a thief in the night. If I can find it on a secondhand site, I am pulling the trigger immediately. But it just will not pop up 
nowhere for me. I haven't found it on Poshmark. I think I may have found it on Bestier Collective, but it was in the wrong size and they don't have the best return policy. And so full price, it's a band. It's a thousand dollars. And I don't know. I don't know because Again, we're thinking about spring and summer. And so I may be able to wear this for another month at the most. It doesn't mean obviously it won't be my wardrobe long term, but that doesn't necessarily excite me. I'm thinking, I'm thinking about it. Y'all let me know about my shopping list down below where you would invest and where you wouldn't. The next thing is this Dries Van Natten bib shirt having a moment with Dries. I got a pair of gold Dries boots. If you saw my New York Fashion Week vlog while I was at Bergdorf, um, I have, I think, one or two other Dries but not in pieces. And I actually tried this bib on, bib shirt, when I was in Lisbon and they had it in silver. I left it there because I had to respect myself. I had already done enough shopping in Lisbon. And when I found it in white, I was like, oh God, is this, is this you? the side boob that it gives, but you could always layer a shirt or a dress underneath it. Just long term, it, it, it would give. It is a delicious piece. And this comes in at about 450 or so on sale. So there aren't a lot of these left. I think if I'm going to do it, I probably need to go ahead and do it and make, I'm looking out my flame boots over here at the corner of my eye guide. It's just, I don't know if that's a devil or if it's an angel, but, but I, I'm really thinking of ways that this could be styled so magically. Um, so that is on the list. Okay. And then in the spirit of the chartreuse color that I'm loving, this H&M sweater seems to be a really good buy for me. Yes, it's a sweater, but unlike the Loewe one, I mean, it is a fraction of the price, okay? And so not being able to get much more wear out of it this time of year is not a big deal to me. And I absolutely love the color. Now with that color in mind, there's also this great feather top over at Karen Millen. Karen Millen has the pieces, y'all. I spent some time on the website and I was very pleasantly surprised. I don't know why I thought they did primarily really conservative clothing or like uh, workwear primarily. But that's not true. I went to their website and was shocked, honey. I, in tears, I'm a white refrigerator. I said, look at all of this. Amazing. And so what I really like, because feathers is something that I love to keep in my wardrobe, one of my favorite items of all time is my black sheer styling shirt with the feathers around my neck. And so this feather piece with a pair of denim and a good old nasty heel, ooh, my gold Jimmy Choo Bing sandals and a pair of like relaxed or... Re what if we did those cargo pants that I just mentioned, the feather top and the Jimmy Bean shoes? I love to have, once again, the stunt pieces, okay? Uh, and this is definitely a standout piece for me. Where am I going? Trader Joe's, the groceries. I'm going to uh, the school play for my goddaughters. I'm going everywhere. Okay, I dress for myself, not for the occasion. Um, and this feather top is delicious. Now, keeping with the Karen Millen theme, I saw this white button down and loved it. There's also a similar one, I think, by the Frankie shop that is padded in the shoulders. Either way, to have something cropped, I love for two reasons. Number one, that kind of midsection can be so cute when you're wearing high-waisted pants or denim. Um, but also, I don't have anything like it, and I love just a classic piece that can be worn in multiple ways. And the last category of items are keeping my travels in mind. And so there is this dress from Pat Bow. Pat Bow, I stopped by the boutique when I was in New York and I was just floored. I think it had just opened maybe six months before. I'd never been inside of a Pat Bow boutique before. I think their pieces are great for vacation. They're great for warmer months. And I could even see this dress worn with an oversized blazer on top of it. Uh, it's also still part of the green family, even though it's a deeper, richer kind of khaki green. But I can see myself wearing it with another pop of color juxtaposed against it. 
And then I have two black owned brands I'm looking at. One is Kiari. I wore her boots during New York Fashion Week and I love the mule version. And she has these in about five or six colors, which I think would be really good. I wouldn't go for the black, but I would want them in a pop of color because I think they will look really good while I'm traveling, especially. But also the heel is super, super comfortable, which I'm looking for right now. And that's really the only pair of shoes, maybe a pair of sandals, but I haven't found the ones that I would put on my list yet. And then there is DR Blue. They are really big on Instagram. People have sent me more than one of their images specifically because people say, girl, I thought this was you. The models are absolutely stunning. And also what I love is that it just screams vacation. As a matter of fact, their newest collection is the Morocco collection. So that feels like serendipitous for sure. And I love this two piece set. Any type of coordinating set I'm usually down for uh, because it can be worn obviously in a whole myriad of ways. And I love this color as well. The wide leg pants are just flowy. They're probably gonna move so nicely, photograph so well as well. And that is on my shopping list. So of course, all these things would not be purchased. If they were, they would be well above my budget for the season. Again, not sure if I will purchase any of these items, but I do have them in mind if I get that itch to buy something. Y'all let me know down below, what would you definitely go for that is on my list? What is on your shopping list for your upcoming capsule? And also, which one of these tips has been the most helpful for you? In the meantime, make sure you are following me over on social media, TikTok and on Instagram and you are listening to my new podcast, Justice. We would love to also have you in our private community where you get exclusive content. I will see you good people across the internet. Peace.